It was of that I intended to speak to you. It might be done. Yes, yes, God will repay you for it, faltered Sonia. Sonia, gazing intently at Pyotr Petrovich. Pyotr, Peter, Peter Petrovich, it might be, but we will talk of it later. 295, Crime and Punishment. We might begin it today. We will talk it over this evening and lay the foundation. And lay the foundation, so to speak. Come to me at 7 o'clock. Mr. Lebeziat. Lebeziat Nikov, I hope, will assist us. But there's one circumstance of which I ought to warn you beforehand. And for which I venture to trouble you. Safia. Safia Semyana. Semyanovna. To come here, in my opinion, money cannot be indeed. It's unsafe to put it into Katerina Ivanovna's, Ivanovna's own hands. The dinner today is a proof of that, though she has not, so to speak, a crust of bread for tomorrow and, well, boots or shoes or anything. She has bought today Jamaica rum and even, I believe, Madeira and coffee. I saw it as I passed through. Tomorrow it will all fall upon you again. They won't have a crust of bread. It's absurd, really. And so to my thinking, a subscription not to be raised so that the unhappy widow should not know of the money, but only you, for instance. Am I right? I don't know. This is only today, once in her life. She was so anxious to do honor to celebrate the memory, and she's very sensible. And just as you think, and I shall be very, very, they will all be, and God will reward. And the orphans, Sonia, then burst into tears. Just crying like a big old fat crybaby crying fuck. Just a crybaby fuck, you know. Very well then. Keep it in mind and now will you accept for the benefit of your relation the small sum that I am able to spare from me personally. I'm very anxious and my name should not be mentioned in connection with it here. Having so to speak and anxieties of my own. I cannot do more and Pyotr Petrovich. Pyotr. Petrovich held out to Sonia. Sonia. Uh, first of all, Sonia was certainly a 10 ruble note. 10 rubles. Man, we're all going to have to learn this fucking ruble shit. Russians. The only, you know, word I know in Russia is, you know, nyet. Nyet, nyet, nyet. Fucking, what's, I need to learn some Ukrainian. Go fuck yourself, isn't that? That's not Ukrainian. What is it? American. Shawnee. Flushed crimson. So Peter Petrovich gave to Sonia a 10 ruble note carefully unfolded. Sonia took it, flushed crimson, jumped up, muttered something, and began taking leave. Peter Petrovich accompanied her ceremoniously to the door. She got out of the room and at last, agitated and distressed, and returned to Katerina Ivanovna. Ivanovna. Ivan Nobna, overwhelmed with confusion. Why not just Katerina at this point? Almost 300 pages in and we're using her entire goddamn name. Just Katerina. Ivan Nobna. Too many. Too many Ivan Nobna. Three. That's too clunky. I don't like it all this time. Lebeziatnikov. Lebeziatnikov. Had stood at the window. Walked about the room. Anxious not to interrupt the conversation, when Sonia had gone, he walked up to Pyotr, Pyotr Petrovich and solemnly held out his hand. I heard and saw everything, he said, laying stress on the last verb. That is honorable. I mean to say it's humane. You wanted to avoid gratitude, I saw, <clears throat> and although I cannot confess in principles sympathize with private charity for it not only fails to eradicate the evil but even promotes it yet i must admit that i saw your action with pleasure yes yes i like it i like it so um this is clearly a conversation between you know somebody and a, another person you have lebeziat nakov and then you have sonia you have that piater piater petrovich uh, lebeznyatsnikov and then you have Madeira, Madeira was mentioned. Jamaica, Katerina Ivanovna. So that's, uh, you know, one of the pages, right? We're just going to read three random pages. And um, 
I guess we'll talk a little bit about it. So crime and punishment. Should we stop crime? Yes. Should we do crime? No. But what if no? Now let's repeat. Should you do crime? No. Should you stop crime? Yes. Okay. Crime and punishment. Carrying on page 185. I, I selected these pages completely at random. So if you're like, this is, what is this? How else do you discover literature, motherfucker? This is boring as shit. This is terrible. This is awful. I'm not, I'm not doing nothing. I'm trying to make this better. This is awful. I mean, Shell Silverstein, I got some Shell Silverstein coming up, you know, later, but what the fuck? <laughs> Petroviches, I'm reading um that Rip Van Winkle. That uh, Legend of Sleepy Hollow wasn't. Uh, it was fun to read, but it wasn't very fun. It's kind of a boring ending. And then a headless horseman who may have been pretending some other guy and scared him off, and then he never came back. And end of story. Yeah, well, and they shot fucking Old Yeller at the end, too. What's your goddamn point? Old Yeller, that's a good. Give me the gun, ball. No, ball. Just give me the gun, ball. Oh, he's my dog. Both the manner and form of Pyotr. Ah, Pyotr. He's back. And we're going backwards. I mean, isn't that fun? It's like 300. Now 185. What is... And Pyotr, he was there in the end. He's there in the middle. Both the manner and form of Pi Peter Petrovich's courtship showed me at once what he wanted. He may, of course... Think too well of himself, but I hope he esteems me too. Why are you laughing again? And why are you blushing again? You are lying, sister. You are intentionally lying. Simply from feminine obstance. Obstinancy. Obstinancy. <laughs> Obst You're being obstinate. Obstinancy. Obstinancy. Simply to hold your own against me. You cannot respect Luz Hen. You cannot respect Luz Hen. I've seen him, I've talked with him, and so you're selling yourself for money, and so in any case you're acting basely, and I'm glad at least that you can blush for it. It is not true. I'm not lying, cried Duo, Duo Unia. <laughs> Why do Russians have stupid names? Losing her composure. <laughs> Fucking Duo Unia. <laughs> Get it together, Duanya. Get it together. I would not marry him if I were not convinced that he esteems me and thinks highly of me. I would not marry him if I were not firmly convinced that I can respect him. Fortunately, I can have convincing proof of it this very day. And such a marriage is not a vileness, as you say. And even if you were right, if I really had determined on a vile action, it is not merciless on your part to speak to me like that. Why do you demand of me a heroism? That perhaps you have not either. It is despotism. It is tyranny. If I ruin anyone, it is only myself. I am not committing a murder. Why do you look at me like that? Why are you so pale, Rod, yet, darling? What's the matter? Good heavens! You made him faint, cried Pulcheria Alexand Alexandrovna. No, no nonsense. It's nothing. A little giddiness. Not fainting. You have fainting on the brain. Hmm. Yes, what was I doing? Oh, yes, and... What will, in what way will you get convincing proof today that you can respect him and that you, that he, and that he esteems you as you said? I think you said today, Mother, show Radya Pyotr Petrovich's letter, said Du Unya with trembling hands. Paul Cheria Alex, Alexandrovna gave him the letter. He took it with great interest, but before opening it, he looked. He suddenly looked with a wonder, a sort of wonder at Duanya. It is strange, he said slowly, as though struck by a new idea. What am I making such a fuss for? What is it all about? Marry whom you like, he said this as though to himself, but said it aloud and looked and looked for some time at his sister as though puzzled. He opened the letter at last, still with the same look, a strange wonder on his face, and slowly Attentively, he began reading. He read through it twice. Pulcheria, 
Alexandrovna showed marked anxiety and all indeed expected something particular. What surprises me, he began after a short pause, handing the letter to his mother but not addressing anyone in particular, is that he is a businessman, a lawyer, and his conversation is pretentious indeed, and yet he writes such an uneducated letter. Still awful and terrible. So far, awful and goddamn terrible. I mean, maybe the back two years before he wrote it, something Dostoevsky is a dickhead, supreme masterpieces. Raskolnikov confesses to the crime and goes to prison. There he realizes that happiness and redemption can only be achieved through suffering infused with forceful religious, social, philosophical elements. The novel was an immediate success. What Rosco Raskol Nikov. So this Raskol Raskol Nikov, he's an impoverished student tormented by his own nihilism. He just don't give a fuck about anybody or anything in the struggle between good and evil. He believes he's above the law. He's convinced that humanitarian ends justify vile means. And that's why he brutally murders an old woman, a pawnbroker whom he regards as stupid, ailing, greedy, and good for nothing. And then, you know, goes to prison. So, that's that's the fucking crux of the whole fucking story, isn't it? So, nihilism, good versus evil. He thinks he's above the law. Convinced that humanitarian ends justify vile means. Does it? Humanitarian ends. Hmm. You don't want vile means. You do want, you know, humanitarian ends. You want it humanitarian ends with, you know, decent and good means, if possible. So, what's the point? What's the point? So, should you go around, you know, killing old women just for the fuck of it because you think you're better than them and you want to steal their damn money and... <laughs> no, no. In The Sopranos, that's what Paulie did in The Sopranos. Drawn upon experiences from his own prison days. Okay, so Raskolnikov. Um, no, 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 no. Do not, do not go around killing old ladies. <laughs> Here, let's go back to the, the. Should we stop crime? Yes. Should we do crime? No. But what if? No, 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 no. Should we do crime? No. Should we stop crime? Yes. Carrying on. Page 119. The fantastic conclusion of Jonathan Masters' criticism. <laughs> Reading of Fyodor Dostoyevsky. What, are you going to be a Dostoyevsky? What kind of Dostoyevsky are you, motherfucker? Look at this Dostoyevsky. Fucking Dostoyevsky, motherfucking Dostoyevsky. You doistin, you gonna doist like a Yevsky? You fucking doistin Yevsky, Raskolnikovin. He learned it by heart to show off, Raskolnikov pronounced suddenly. Uh oh. Well, this is the first time we've heard of the fucking murderer. What if, asked P Peter Pyotr Petrovich. Who is this Piter? <laughs> this Piter. This Piter Petrovich. <laughs> oh, Piter Petrovich. Not catching his words, but he received no reply. That's all true, Zasimov hastened to interpose. Isn't it so? Pyotr Petrovich went on glancing affably at Zasimov. You must admit, he went on addressing Raz, Razum Ihin with a shade of triumph and superciliousness. He almost added, young man, that there is an advance or... As they say now, progress in the name of science and economic truth. A commonplace. No. No, not a commonplace. Here. Thur. Two. High thur two. High thur two, for instance. <laughs> oh, I'd want to throw something if somebody ever said high thur two in real life. Therefore, hi, Thur, too, for instance, if I were told, love thy neighbor, what came of it? Peter Petrovich went on, perhaps with excessive haste, it came to my tearing my coat in half to share with my neighbor. We both were left 
half naked as a Russian proverb has it, catch several hairs and you won't catch one. Science now tells us love yourself before all men for everything in the world. Rest on self-interest. You love yourself and manage your own affairs properly and your coat remains whole. Economic truth adds that the better private affairs are organized in society, the more whole coats, so to say, the firmer are its foundations and the better is the common welfare organized too. Therefore, in acquiring wealth solely and exclusively for myself, I am acquired, so to speak, for all and helping to bring to pass my neighbors getting a little more than a torn coat and that not from private personal liberality, but as a consequence of the general advance. The idea is simple. But unhappily, it has been a long time reaching us, being hindered by idealism and sentimentality. And yet it would seem to want very little wit to perceive it. Excuse me, I've got very little wit myself, Razumihin, cut in sharply, and so let us drop it. I began this discussion with an object, but I've grown so sick during the last three years of this chattering to amuse oneself of this incessant flow of commonplace is always the same. That by Jove, I blush even when other people talk like that. You're in a hurry, no doubt, to exhibit your requirements. And I don't blame you. That's quite pardonable. I only wanted to find out what sort of man you are. For so many unscrupulous people have got hold of the progressive cause of late and have so distorted in their own interest everything they touch that the whole cause has been dragged in the mire. That's enough! Excuse me, sir, said Luzhin, affronted and speaking with excessive dignity. Do you mean to suggest so unceremoniously that hi to dot 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 oh dear sir dot 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 how could I dot 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 come? That's enough, Razumihin concluded, and he turned abruptly to Zosimov to continue their previous conversation. Fucking crap. God damn. Give me the classic fucking illustrated version. Give me the goddamn motherfucking cliff notes. Give me the fucking movie, you know? Just have somebody else read the damn thing and just summarize the whole book. For, I mean, the back of the book really tells you everything, doesn't it? It's a pawnbroker, old lady. He thinks he could kill her. Should he kill her? She is he allowed to kill her? Uh, you know, some people, I guess, say yes. So that's, that's Russia, huh? <laughs> that's Russia for you. You know what I mean? People, oh, literature. All the motherfuckers that ever talk to literature are a bunch of curmudgeon fucking pricks, a bunch of fucking assholes. They think they're better than ever. Oh, you read a book, huh, motherfucker? Can you make that, you know, boring-ass book fucking exciting? Shakespeare got all that <laughs> comedy of errors. Comedy of errors has a slavery. Oh, yeah, then there's this and that. And it's all funny, and then there's slavery. It's a bad story. It's a bad story. Aesop, he had a better story. Aesop had a... God, there's like two awesome stories I heard. One was the dog and the groomer. The No, that was the horse and the groomer. And he was... The groomer was, you know, grooming the horse, but he was taking the feed and selling it into the city. And he smiled at the horse and... You know, said, hey, I got you. You know, don't worry. I'm grooming you. Sitting there, he's like, well, if you actually give a shit, why don't you, you know, stop smiling and give that grain that you done stole, you know. Why don't you bring that grub that you done ain't got no business on back here, huh? And then the other one was the dog and something else. And it had something to do with the dog was being unruly. So the owner put a chain and then tied it to a log. And the dog still walked around like it was all proud. <laughs> It was all haughty, and the moral of that story is notoriety is not the same as fame. Notoriety is not the same as fame. And it reminds me of Tecumseh. My dog was such an unruly, tough dog to, you know, um, get a hold of. But when I put a chain on him, when I put a collar on him, he seemed fucking proud. And in some respects, there, that is a um, kind of a, a mark of ownership, right? This is, this is mine. This is mine. I'm going to keep him. And so even though he might have looked silly, like being all proud, like with his leash on, hey, I got my leash on. You put this leash on me. I like it. Look at this. Look at this, everybody. So, yeah, the moral notoriety isn't fame. Good moral. It reminds me of my dog, Tecumseh. Tecumseh. Good-ass fucking dog. First dog I ever owned. Nazis in Costilla County killed him. I still don't. That was almost two years ago. 
That's how Nazi these motherfuckers are. I'd feel bad. I'd want to tell the person, but these pieces of shit ain't got 